Okay, the purpose of this video is to understand simple harmonic motion and related to uh, equations of position, um, velocity, acceleration, and also to quantify things like energy. So we've got a lot to cover here. So simple harmonic motion, that just means that you have um, a cyclical process, something that repeats at regular intervals. A classic example would be a, uh, a mass on the spring that just basically oscillates up and down. As it's displaced from equilibrium on either end, it's going to want to return to equilibrium. Um, so you have a, a force, a restoring force uh, from Hooke's law, causing it to come back from which the direction it's displaced. Now, if we take something like that, um, and let's say we set it into motion. Now, you'll have to use your imagination here, but pretend the uh, this ball right here that was oscillating now is moving forward, and let's pretend that it can leave an imprint of its position as it moves across the screen. So, it did something like this the whole way down. And it repeated its cycle. It came to the same spot at regular intervals. We would consider the amount of time that it takes for it to do that as the period. The inverse of period would be frequency, or how often a cycle repeats. So if you have the period, you can get the frequency by taking the reciprocal of it. And conversely, if you had the uh, frequency, you can get the, uh, the period by taking the reciprocal. And the units for frequency are in hertz, that's cycles per second. The unit for period is just time in seconds. Now let's analyze the, um, the position curve that we just made with our, um, with our mass that was oscillating, running up and down, and uh, sliding across the screen. That um, appears sinusoidal. It appears to have the form. A sine omega t. Now, more specifically, the position versus time is going to take this form, where omega is the angular frequency. I'm going to add a phase shift just in case. And let's define all of these parts. A stands for amplitude. So an amplitude is now, this is often confused. Amplitude is measured from the equilibrium to one of its maxima. Not to be confused with, um, now I believe A for amplitude. Not to be confused with going all the way from one maxima to the other. That is not amplitude. So, the omega term here, that is angular frequency. Not to be confused with this frequency, um, angular frequency is measured in radians per second. So in other words, how much of our entire cycle have we done per unit time? And if you make it all the way around, if you're using uh, radians instead of degrees, if you make it one cycle, that's two pi radians. That would be the, the full cycle um, all the way around. So therefore, we can conclude that omega for, for one cycle gives us this format. 
So the angular frequency is going to be equal to 2 pi multiplied by the regular frequency. And that kind of makes sense if you think about if you went one complete cycle, you've gone 2 pi radians, and that's where the, the 2 pi factor comes in. So we have this function uh, that tells us the position of a simple harmonic oscillator with respect to time. Uh, but that's just a function of position. We can also use this function to get an expression for the velocity with respect to time. And for those of us that know our calculus, the, and by definition, the derivative of a position function with respect to time is your, your velocity function. So the derivative of our tap function here should just be negative omega a cosine omega t plus theta. And likewise, we can do the same thing. We can take another derivative and uh, we can get the function for acceleration. So that will be negative omega squared a sine omega t plus. Now really the latter part of that equation is really just our uh, position with respect to time function. So we could say that the acceleration is equal to um, omega squared times the x Now these functions all have maxima, which are very easy to find. The best possible solution to a sine function would be 1. So the maximum x value is just going to be a for amplitude. And that kind of makes sense. If you're stretched all the way to the max, that is the amplitude. Likewise, for uh, the velocity, this function maxes out at 1. So your velocity max is just going to be omega times amplitude. And you do the same thing for acceleration. Maximum acceleration should then be omega squared times amplitude. And these things are going to be useful if you need to do problems that ask for things like position or velocity or acceleration.